Continuing in our analogy from the last video, I'm going to uh, keep going and uh, show you a few other things that we can do with this sort of chocolate uh, experiment. So what I can do is, remember before we were looking at a battery, that was the person who's giving out chocolate. We had an ammeter here that was measuring um, how many coulombs go by every second. I drew my terminal really huge, but oh well. Uh, but now what we can do is introduce something called a resistor. So resistors are drawn as little squares like this. In a, some other circuits, you know, they would draw them as a squiggly line, but in the IB, they choose to use a little square like this. So that's a resistor. And that means that it actually resists uh, the flow of electricity. What it really does in practice is resistors heat up. That can be useful if you want to make a light bulb, right? Just have a, have a material that has a very high resistance. In other words, when you pass electricity through it, it heats up a whole bunch. Tungsten happens to work really well. That's why old school light bulbs had always had tungsten in them. Even the new ones have that. Um, so that's just something going on in this circuit. Now, the way to represent this in this little uh, analogy with this chocolate uh, analogy, what I would do is this resistor would be represented by a chair. So that means that I would have all the students, you know, as they walked across, you remember each student is a coulomb of charge. So they would gain a piece of chocolate at the battery. Then they would walk by and then I would ask them, well, um, what are you going to do when you get to the chair? And most of the students understand, of course, you have to step up and over the chair. But every time you step up and over the chair, then you have to, that's when you eat your chocolate. And most of the students understand that very well, which is great because if I have that resistor, then what I would do, of course, is um, if I measured the voltage across this, in other words, if I me measured the potential difference, remember if I put a little voltmeter here, and I would measure a drop of one volt because see here, if I measured it here, this would be a gain of one volt. In other words, the potential difference would be one volt. In other words, uh, in our analogy here, this would be gaining one piece of chocolate. As you go by the chair here, you'd lose a piece of chocolate. So that would be a, uh, also, a, it would measure a voltage, a potential difference of one volt, this time lost. Okay, so I could measure those there. And oftentimes, whenever we have things around um, the battery, we normally call those things kind of with little subscript zero. So normally we would say, you know, this would be V0, and then we could say this is V1. Now the thing is, if we measured the current, uh, let's say I put a little ammeter right by the battery here, then that would actually be, that would be the current I0. We actually use the letter I to represent current. Okay, so this would be the current at the battery. Whereas if we put an ammeter right by this thing right here, maybe I could call that you know, I1, you know, around this thing. So that's the, sort of what's going on here. Now the key thing is, what if I added a second resistor? So this right here is going to explain uh, things in series. So what if I added another resistor? Okay, so I had it like this right here. So I had still my ammeter here, let's say. Actually, it doesn't even matter where I put my ammeter. I'll just leave it out. Let's say I had one resistor, R1, and I had another resistor of resistance, R2, and went around. Now imagine you only gained one piece of chocolate when you come by uh, the battery. Then what would you do if you're a student? And usually the students can figure this out really well. I just ask them, okay, well, what do you do? And usually someone says, well, are the chairs the same height? It's like, yep, let's assume they're the same height chair. In other words, we're going to assume that this resistance is the same as that one, just to start with. Well, then the students will say, well, I just eat half the piece of chocolate here, and then I eat the other half here. I say, good. So that means then that, um, so we can actually talk about this as far as the uh, currents go and as far as the voltages go. So uh, what we could say then, if this is the voltage around the battery, and this is sort of the you know, voltage across number one and the, across number two, if I did it like this, and these were the same resistance values, then I would measure you know, one volt gained here. Here I would measure one volt lost. And here I'd measure one volt lost. Uh, sorry, half a volt lost and half a volt lost. That's because you gain one, you have to use up half and half. Well that then tells you or allows you to calculate something really cool. Um, and this is why I like using this analogy because you can use this to come up with the equations. So these two equations, I mean either people memorize them, sometimes they're called Kirchhoff's laws, people call it Kirchhoff, it doesn't matter. But, um, well, I suppose if you're his family, you'd probably care. But um, I0 then, let's look at that. Um, oh, actually, we just figured out the voltage here. 
So the voltage at the battery is going to equal the sum of these two, right? A half plus a half equals one. So in that case, then I could say V1 plus V2. Now, if you think about the currents, in other words, what if I put a little ammeter right here? Well, if I put it right there, I would measure uh, just a certain number of coulombs per second going by. If I placed it right here, right by this one, I'd still measure the same number of coulombs per second, right? There's nowhere else for them to go. What if I placed it here, or here, or here, or here? It wouldn't matter. In other words, the current, you know, by number one, uh, by the battery here, is the same as the current um, near, let's say, resistor one, which is the same as the current near resistor two. And of course, these sort of, these keep going if there's a whole bunch more resistors in there. So this is actually sort of Kirchhoff's laws. You can use that uh, just from this analogy. Now, uh, the equation booklet also gives you, the data booklet, sorry, also gives you another equation about how the resistances are related to each other. And it turns out the resistance that's felt by the battery, in other words, if you're the battery, you're sort of feeling a circuit that's connected to you as if there's a single resistance. That's what's kind of cool. You can figure out what does the battery think there is. Of course, there's two resistors, but you can reduce that to just a single resistor. And you can figure out what the battery sort of effectively feels. I'm going to put a little R0, but the equation booklet doesn't. It just has it like this. So in other words, the, the data booklet just has it as R equals R1 plus R2. I like to put a zero to tell me that's the battery. And of course, dot, dot, dot. In other words, if I had four or five different resistors, and that's how it would go. Keep in mind, though, what if one chair was higher than the other? In other words, one had a bigger resistance. Most students then understand, oh, I just have to use up more energy on the bigger one. So maybe you'd eat, I don't know, three quarters of your chocolate on the big chair, maybe only one quarter on the small chair. But you see, it actually doesn't matter. The cool thing is that the sum of them will still equal what you gained here. In other words, if it's you know, 0.75 here and 0.25, add them up, you still get one. And that's actually how this works. Now, we have another situation. What if we're in parallel? So if we have a parallel circuit, this time, uh, let's see here. So here, this would be represented by a circuit maybe that goes like this. Keep in mind, though, you can do any combination. It's not just like this. You can have circuits that are combos of series and parallel, and they can look totally crazy. But just to make this nice and simple for now, so this here would be the battery here. So now then what happens with the voltages? So I, I would actually uh, you know, set up the students like this, put a chair here, chair here, and tell them you have to go around either here, or if you're Coulomb of charge, you go around here. So I'd ask the students to figure that out, and usually they'd say, okay, well, uh, maybe when we get over here, you know, maybe uh, half the students will go here, and the other half will go here. In other words, every second student. You know, so one student goes here, the next one goes down, the next one goes here, the next one goes down. And of course, then after they're done, they'd end up having to meet up again, and then they'd, of course, hopefully they're nice, and they're being polite, and they're uh, going one person goes, then the next person from the other track here goes and that's actually uh, very well represented by a parallel circuit. So if I did that, then let's think about what the currents would do and what the voltages would do. In other words, the potential difference. Imagine, and this is what I do in really complicated circuits, I still think about myself being a coulomb of charge, you know, going around, I gain my piece of chocolate, and then I go around, and if I only pass through this, if that was my path, well, I gained one piece of chocolate here, how much do I eat here? The whole thing, because I only have to pass through the one, right? Because I go across, I only eat one. Uh, sorry, I gain one, that means I have to lose one. And so because of that then, you can see hopefully that these voltages are all equal to each other. So that's kind of neat. And it turns out then that the uh, currents are the ones that add. I'll show you that uh, in a second here. So the reason why is, what if I put an ammeter right here? Well, I'd be measuring the full number of students per second coming by. But what if I put it here? The only coulombs going by here, you know, the only ones passing by this are the ones that came through this. And if we assumed it was half of them, assuming these were the same size chairs, again, if it was half of them passing through, then I'd only measure half the current here, right? Half the number of students per second. And if I placed one here, right across here, or maybe I put it here, I would measure um, again, half the number that I measure up here. 
And what that tells you then is this one half plus one half has to add up to this. It turns out you can make the chairs different sizes, and that means they don't have to be half and half, but they do have to add up to this. So in other words, I could say that I1 plus I2. Now of course, these keep going. And then the very last equation uh, that's relevant to us, I think, is how the resistors in parallel work. So this is just something from the equation booklet. You can actually derive this and show why this is, but that's a bit more complicated. This analogy doesn't help to get there. So this, I would say, okay, well, this one right here, this is on the equation booklet. Uh, I keep saying that, the data booklet. And this one right here is also on the data booklet. It goes like this. So it just says that 1 over r equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2. And of course, it keeps going if you have you know, five or six of them. What I like to do, though, personally, is I like to write a little p here. And that tells me that's like the parallel uh, equivalent. So what I could do then is if I get a really complicated looking circuit, I take the piece of it that's parallel, and I would simplify it this way. This is really helpful, though. I mean, these ones right here on your data booklets, that's fine. You don't have to memorize those. But I think it's really important, though, to be able to come up with these equations here for parallel and for series. And the way I like to do that is just by remembering this little uh, you know, chocolate lab that we do.